Hi, this is Margaret from Warm and Fuzzy Soapery, and today we're making pumpkin patch soap. This soap fragrance did not behave at all, so check out how we handled it. The first thing I do is add my lye solution to my oils. Then I stick blend until I reach an emulsion. I'm going to split this batter off into three separate colors. I'm doing fall colors, so I'd like to have a brown, an orange, and a red. I know from reading the reviews on this fragrance that it's going to turn the batter a light tan to a brown. So I'm only going to add the fragrance to the part that I want to be brown. None of the reviews that I read on this fragrance said that it accelerated at all. Had I known that it accelerated, I wouldn't have used the stick blender just now. I would have only used the whisk. My original plan for this soap was to pour about half of the brown batter into the mold and then do a drop swirl with the other two colors. Pour the remaining brown soap batter on top and then use a hanger tool to swirl all the colors throughout the soap and make it really pretty design. What I didn't realize at the time was that while I was mixing up these beautiful red and orange colors, the batter in the mold was getting hard as a rock. Here's where it hit me. As I pulled it over, I went, uh-oh, this doesn't look right. Let me touch it and make sure. And then being in complete denial, I figured, let me just pour the orange right on top. I could still get a hanger swirl going on in here, right? Yes? No? Uh-uh. At this point, my husband is cursing up a storm and I'm thinking, well, what's the worst that can happen? I'll finish making the soap and if it's terrible, I'll just rebatch it. Oh, right, the brown soap that comes out in one giant blob. Yeah, let me freeze frame that for you so you get a nice good look at it. So at this point I'm thinking, how am I going to save this soap? I can't get the hanger swirl that I wanted, but I have seen people use a wooden spoon, like the back of a wooden spoon, to make a swirl in the soap. So I figured, let me try just using my big giant spoon. Well, this just looks like a giant mess, and at this point, I'm doubting that the soap is going to look good at all. I'm, I'm pretty much planning to rebatch it at this point because I'm sure there's thousands of air bubbles in there, big pockets that I'm missing, and that the colors are just, it's just going to look like a mess when I cut it. I'm sure of it. At this point, I'm just trying to push all of the soap into the mold and push it down, trying to eliminate all of the air pockets that I might have made when I was stirring it like a wild person. I know your time is important to you, so thanks for spending it watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and share it with a friend, and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. And remember, life is short. Use the good soap. Now that this hot mess is all in the mold, I'm gonna try and pretty it up a little bit, put some nice swirls on top. Who knows, maybe I'll get lucky. As I take it out of the mold, I'm a little bit hopeful. It doesn't look nearly as bad as I anticipated it looking. I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought that there was going to be gaping holes in there that I'd either have to fill or just rebatch the entire thing. So due to a glitch, I forgot to turn the camera on, 
I don't have a video of the cutting of the soap, but here's a video of us trimming the soap and some pictures of the final product. I'm actually kind of happy with the way that it turned out. Keep in mind that all of the part that looks a little bit yellow is going to turn to a dark tan or a brown, so I think it's going to look like a really good fall soap.